correlational studies, and this again is part of a descriptive because really you're only describing relations between two variables. Um, measures relations between variables as they occur naturally in the world. What's that mean? What does that mean to you when I say that it measures variables as they occur naturally in the world? An example, and why it wouldn't be experimental. I know you know them. You've taken this before, so exercise your knowledge. Don't worry about being right or wrong in here, right? Just blurt it out, and we'll work it out. Yeah. Okay, so two things that may have an effect on each other that are already happening in the world. I don't do anything to create them. They're already there. So what could two variables be that occur naturally in the world that are already there that we know are related? Yeah? Age and height. Age and height. What else we got? Two things that occur naturally without even doing anything to manipulate it. We know there's a relation between these two variables. If you study, do you get higher grades? One would think. Weather and mood. So the rainier it is, the pissier you are. Or the sunnier it is, the more, it's, it's actually called um, pathetic fallacy in English, right? That your mood reflects the, uh, the weather. Yeah. Physical activity and body weight, or BMI, right? Because your weight may go up as you build muscle, but BMI for sure. So, I'm not going to come into a class and say there's a relation between studying and high grades. So, how do I know this? Well, I'm going to take half of the class, and half of you are going to study, and the other half, I'm taking your books away from you, and you're going to be denied access to virtual campus. <laughs> right? <laughs> no slides for you. And we're going to find out that, well, we're hopefully going to find out that the people who are, have the ability to study are going to get higher grades than you. <laughs> you can't do that kind of research. So when you do a correlation study, often the data are going to dictate what kind of a study it's going to be. Smoking and cancer. We know that the more you smoke, the higher the rate of cancer. I'm not going to say, OK, I'm going to form two groups. And you guys, I want you to puff away two packs a day. The other group, no cigarettes. And then in 10 years, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to see how your lungs are doing. Right? Clearly unethical. So we take what is already there in the world. And we ask you, how many cigarettes do you smoke? And then we look at the uh, epidemi epidemiology uh, stats from the hospitals. And we see that a relationship exists. I look at your grades. I may ask you, how often do you study? So we know that there is a correlation. Okay. So clearly, it's already there. The thing about a correlation is it has strength and it has direction. It's indicated by this coefficient called r. And r is an index that can range from negative 1 up to positive 1. Right? No correlation is 0. Is negative correlation better than a positive correlation? Why not? If it's a negative correlation, does that mean that there's no correlation? There's an absence of a correlation? So what does negative mean? What's a negative correlation? A negative correlation, a negative 0.8, is that a strong correlation? Very strong. What does it mean? As one variable increases, the other decreases? Exactly. So a negative correlation just means that the direction of the two variables is in the opposite direction. As one goes up, the other goes down. A positive correlation, they're moving in the same direction. They both go up or they both go down, right? So increased behavior, increased studying behavior, increased grades, grades a positive correlation. Give me an example of a negative correlation. I'll give you one. The number of drinks that you have will decrease your grades, right? As one goes up, the other goes down. Um, what's another one? Yeah. The more you brush your teeth, let's say cavities decreases or plaque decreases. Right, exactly. So you get the idea. So here's a scatter plot. And a scatter plot is a way we look at our data to see if there is a trend in the scatter point. And it is usually, well, it has to be linear. So a correlation looks at a linear relation, meaning that 
if the variables are highly related, they are going to form a line. And as you can see, the correlation here, positive 0.86, meaning they're moving in the same direction as child's weight increases, their height increases, well, of course, that the taller you are, the more weight you're, the more you're going to weigh in most cases. So we see this kind of hypothetical line that you can draw through the data. It's not perfect. If it were perfect, where would the dots be? All in a straight line, all on the line. But because some are, ga are, are kind of scattered, it's not a one-to-one -one relation, all right? As is this. This is kind of random, uh, positive 0.17, negative 0.11. And as you can see here, child sociability and the number of siblings. It's not a very strong correlation. Over here, number of children and parents' education. Not a very strong uh, correlation, right? Um, down here, contact with mother and child's age. A negative correlation. So as a child increases in age, their contact with the mother, in most cases, decreases, but it's not a perfect relation, okay? Negative 0.42, it's kind of moderate. So the highest, of course, would be one, negative or positive. You don't often get correlations that high. In psychological research, you're lucky to get one, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is very high. Um, and again, zero would be no correlation at all, all right? So I just want to le la end up with this um, exp our example here. And this is a study that was conducted on the relation between watching Sesame Street and improved reading ability. And the correlation was 0.78. And as you can see here, it's linear. So as the number of hours per week increases, watching Sesame Street that is, the person's reading level based on a certain test score, they would have to again operationally define this, and it was on some certain test that they would have used in their material section in their article. But as you can see, it is a linear relation, 0.78, quite strong. So the researchers are then going to make this conclusion that Sesame Street causes improved reading. What's wrong with that? Why can I not say that this causes reading ability? Correlation doesn't prove that Watching Sesame Street increases reading ability. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Okay, so people who watch Sesame Street might be better readers anyway. Or Sesame Street, yeah, might be better readers anyway. So there is no order of, there's no temporal order of causality. We don't know which one is causing which. Is watching Sesame Street improving the reading ability or do children who have improved reading ability tend to watch more Sesame Street? And that's the problem. So in correlational research, you cannot ascertain causality ever, right? Not only that, we have this thing called the third variable problem. You've heard of that? What's the third variable problem? Another variable, something out there you're not even aware of may be influencing these results. It may be that the parents who have high socioeconomic status are reading to their children and turning the TV on, right? So a third variable, or the older children are watching it and they happen to be there. So you don't know what's causing this, which suggests the need for an experiment. All right. So we actually started this um, problem with concluding from this research example that watching Sesame Street, is that where we left off, everybody? Am I on the right thing? Yeah. Um, that uh, we couldn't conclude that based on these data or the scatter plot that watching Sesame Street causes right, improved reading. That's a big statement to make. And of course the reason is because we cannot infer causality. Number one, we don't know which one causes what. Does Sesame Street cause you to have better reading or is it because you are naturally a better reader that you are more prone to watch Sesame Street? Or is it due to the third variable problem, which was what? What's the third variable problem? A variable that, that I'm not even aware of. Yeah. 
And we call it the third variable. It could be the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. We don't know what it is. It could be something out there that we're not aware of that's causing um, or influencing these results. So if you really want to be sure, and I'm, I'm quite positive that the CBC or the uh, CTV, or, or actually the, the network um, broadcast uh, communications agency, would have done research to determine whether this actually does uh, cause reading. So you need to do